My name is Joseph Berger, and I am the Theater Operations and Events Manager at Film Forum. I'm speaking to you all live from our screen too. This is our third virtual event while the theater is temporarily closed. So first and foremost, we wish you all health and happiness at this time. I'd like to welcome everyone joining us via our live stream on our YouTube channel, Film Forum NYC. Please take a moment and subscribe. I'm going to welcome our guest moderator tonight. Our guest moderator, Mark Olson. There he is. Hi, everyone. Mark writes about all kinds of movies for the Los Angeles Times as both a feature writer and reviewer. He creates a regular series on independent documentary and foreign language films under the banner Indie Focus, also curating and hosting the Indie Focus screening series. His work has also appeared in Film Comment, The New York Times, LA Weekly, and Sight and Sound. Our guest filmmaker tonight is Josephine Decker. Josephine is an actor, performance artist, and filmmaker. Before Shirley, she directed the psychological thr thriller Butter on the Latch, the experimental erotic thriller Thou Wast Mild and Lovely, and the critically acclaimed drama Madeline's Madeline. We are proud to present through our virtual cinema platform, Josephine's newest film, Shirley, a hypnotic fever dream portrait of the writer Shirley Jackson, based on the novel by Susan Scarf Merrill. Josephine and cinematographer Sterla Gravelin build a surreal, surreal world around Jackson, played by Elizabeth Moss in a performance that casts a spell. Hi, Josephine, how are you? Hi, I'm good, Joe. How, how are you doing? I hope I did that right. The host asked me to start the video. You're yes. perfect. You're on. I'd love, and I'm very happy to introduce our, our special guest, the star and producer of Shirley, Miss Elizabeth Moss. Elizabeth is a <laughs> new time. Golden Globe winner for her performances on the BBC miniseries Top of the Lake and Hulu's The Handmaid's Tale, for which she also won two Primetime Emmy Awards for her work as both actress and producer. Elizabeth starred as Peggy Olsen on AMC's wildly successful series Mad Men. Elizabeth has acted in dozens of films for nearly 30 years, notably Girl Interrupted, Her Smell, and Us. She stars in the recently released horror film The Invisible Man and Wes Anderson's upcoming feature, The French Dispatch. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hey, Mark. I'll see you guys in a bit. Take okay. care, Mark. Thanks, Thanks so okay, much great. for being here. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, I know you just recently did an interview with Shirley Jackson's son. Yeah, Lawrence. What was that like for you, considering that the, you know, the, the story of the movie, Shirley Jackson does not have children in the movie, what was that conversation with him like? What has it been like getting to know him? Yeah, it was pretty incredible. Uh, the first time I met him was at Sundance. He actually came to our screening there. And um, he walked up to me and he tapped me on the shoulder and I turned around and there was this man and he said, hi, mom. And I said, I'm sorry, what? He said, hi, mom. And I was like, I, I'm so sorry, I don't. And he was like, I'm Shirley Jackson's son, Lawrence. And I was like, oh my god and he was there with his lovely wife and um i got to talk to him like i brought michael over and we got to talk to him for a while and kind of became friendly so we did this piece for the new yorker uh together and um it was just i could i could honestly just sit and talk to him all day he has so many incredible stories about shirley and stanley and and their life and um he's been really generous as well in the in the sense of like what you said mark that we haven't included the children in this story because it's based on the Susan Scarf Merrill novel, which is fiction, you know, fictional, and they're the kids. So um, we cut him out of the story, which some people might be a little bit upset about, but I think he had some processing to do of it, but in the end has been incredibly respectful and generous and appreciative of the film and what we did and, and really open, which has been kind of crazy unique. Because Josephine, I mean, that's been one of the things that people have been talking about with regards to the movie mm. is the extent to which it is or is not a biopic of Shirley Jackson and the ways in which it does and does not diverge from her life. How did you sort of grapple with that yourself when, you know, when you all were making the, the movie? Was that even really a concern of yours? Uh, well, I mean, we were so influenced by her real life. Um, 
by the way, for this Q and A and this Q and A only, I put up all my Shirley Jackson books right here. <laughs> oh my God, you did. This was like, I was like, it was, you know, we had that one Q and A where the moderator had all of his books there. And I was yeah. like, well, I was like, I have all this just space just sitting here, not advertising Shirley. Anyway, uh, that is that's the for you guys. Thing ever. That is, <laughs> that is very special for this film forum audience and you Mark, because that is, that's just for this. That's so cute. <laughs> Um, so clearly she was an influence. Like we are, you know, we, we, I read so much of her work and, um, and obviously read a, a, her biography and also obviously the, the novel that the movie's based on. But um, we, it was always super clear that we were not making a actual historical film. This was, this was not nonfiction. We were making a fictional film and that the most important thing to us was that it feel like a Shirley Jackson story that it feels like you're entering into a world that Shirley Jackson could have crafted. So much more important to me than getting hung up on her biography was getting into her style and how does she tell her stories and what are the ways that she kind of uses reality and the subconscious and the imagination of her characters to kind of create these layers that sort of take you on this wonderful staircase into the, the a, a wilderness you could never imagine. I feel like that's part of every most of her stories and, and novels sort of you go from a reality into a maybe a subconscious reality so you often come back to reality but it's very, it becomes very unclear which reality you're in so I was more influenced by that than anything else and, and I think that was our big goal um, when we were working on the script and then in the film was just to have it feel like her works because Elizabeth what does that do for your performance are you still doing all the kind of research that you might do if you were doing a more straightforward historical movie? Or was there something more kind of imaginative in your preparations for the role? It was a bit of both, honestly. Um, we did all the research uh, into, Michael and I, um, into Shirley and Stanley, you know, read these letters between them that we got the, from the Library of Congress and any biographical information we could get. And obviously I read all of her work uh, that's where I started, but it was kind of um, a perfect situation for me personally because I've never played a real person before. I got to do that research and establish sort of a base for this this woman and who she was, and then kind and then kind of into this stew, this like witch's brew that we were concocting. It add uh, you know the the novel Shirley, add obviously Sarah Govan's incredible incredibly brilliant script, uh, Josephine and Michael and Odessa, and, and it just became this sort of mashup of all of these, all of these things with the, with the base of who Shirley was, and, uh, but I got to kind of pick and choose a little bit what was going to be real and what wasn't, and it actually allowed me to be a little, I think, a little bit more fluid and flexible with it. I, I, I love the idea of playing either Shirley Jackson for real, uh, just in a straight by, by, biopic or playing a historical figure but it's more fun to do something crazy because <laughs> uh, Josephine can you talk a little bit more about the way in which the movie is sort of in the style of Shirley as much as it is about Shirley yeah and I mean a lot of that was in the script Sarah was really all about that and and the novel I think too has elements of that and so you know we're yeah, many elements, honestly. I think there's, there's, she's trapped in this house for a good chunk of the movie. Um, and, and she went through, the real Shirley Jackson went through this kind of agoraphobic period where she sort of locked herself away after she got all this exposure with the lottery and I think kind of uh, wanted to sort of like come back to herself. And there was a bit of fear of going outside. And so, so much of the film takes place in this house and Shirley's stories, houses are characters. The Haunting of Hill House that house sort of almost like transforms to sort of echo the the wilds of this young woman's mind. And um, there's a, one of my favorite short stories of hers called The Visit or A Visit, Visit, um, uh, is about this young woman who goes and visits her friend's house. And the house sort of like has all these layers of itself in it. It's almost like the, there's like paintings of the house in the house and you sort of get the feeling she will never get to leave, that she's kind of gone out of out of time in a way in the, in the short story. and. Um, so houses are real characters. I think Shirley had some kind of architectural 
uncle or something. So she was yeah. obsessed. Um, and uh, so that was one element was just trying to bring the house to life. And then um, that duality of Shirley and Rose is a, a part of so much of Shirley's work. She usually has one character who's, um, she'll ha two, a close female friendship is at the heart of a lot of her novels. Hangs a Man, We've Always Lived in the Castle, Haunting of Hill House. And usually you're dealing with one character who has kind of like um, a, an excellent baker and can, you know knows how to get along with men. <laughs> and then another character who is really misanthropic and sort of um, it, wicked maybe a little bit, but also really has a great sense of humor and is to some degree maybe very insecure. So that binary of two female characters is inside of Shirley's work. And I think that was when we were bringing the film to life was sort of like, how do these two women overlap? And her biographer talks about how those two people for Shirley, she thinks the biographer thinks this is two halves of Shirley's consciousness. She was actually a wonderful mother and um, like great in the kitchen. Um, and I think that was at times at war with her desire to be a writer and like live in, live a life that's purely of the mind. And um, so yeah, reconciling these two women felt like also reconciling the two sides of one woman. Those are just a few examples. There were a million other ways <laughs> that we tried to bring it out. And did you feel that same way, Elizabeth? Like, was there some, in your performance, is there some amount of like reconciling these different sides of Shirley's persona? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. These conversations are so interesting because we're off, we've probably talked more about the film doing these discussions that I feel like we actually got the opportunity to do. <laughs> before we started the movie. So Very I'm true. listening and I'm like, wow, yeah, that's true. That's really good. Um, <laughs> that is what we did. Um, I, do, I, I do think so. I mean, I think for me, any character has multiple um, sides to them and um, should be at any way, either written or played to have uh, many facets as, as, because that's what humans are. You know, we, are, we have many sides to our personalities. Um, and can be many things at once. And I find that to be very true of women as well. Women can be many things at once. Um, so I, I suppose I, I, you know, for me, Rose definitely allowed me to play a lot of things that um, would have perhaps been a little bit one note if I'd just done one thing throughout the whole movie, just sat at the typewriter, just, you know, and been grumpy drinking. Um, it allowed me to fall in love with somebody and to be jealous and to hate someone and feel passion and, and all of those things um, in a really unusual way. Because one of the things I like so much about the movie is it has this kind of woozy sort of hothouse like vibe to it that like the feel of the movie is so in sync with your performance. How does that happen? Like what sort of conversations are you having with Josephine as far as you capturing this sort of like vibe that is part of the bigger movie? Um, I think it, I think kind of you said this about the script. It, it, I think it kind of stems from the script. It, it, you know, that script was so good and so beautifully written and so clear that it ends up kind of doing a lot of the work for you. So the people that tend to come to the project, whether it's Josephine or me or Michael, they, you know, we are all seeing the same movie where we we've, we've all fallen in love with this material. So even though there's exploration to be had and you know, you're know you affected by things around you that are happening when you're shooting, you're definitely, you're all there to make this movie. There's not a lot of different versions of this movie that one is gonna make. Um, and then also I think being familiar with Josephine's work and her kind of oeuvre and her, and her style, that kind of helped to know what kind of movie we were making and what I was walking into. And, observing what her and Sterla were doing with the camera. I was like, okay, we're following cracks up the wall. Like, all right, I get, I get the vibe of this, you know? Um, and then I think we were all affected by the production design, um, which was incredible. This incredible house that we lived in to shoot the movie. Um, it felt that hot house kind of effect that you feel was very real. It was just, it was present in the movie. That movie felt, it, it, the shooting of it felt like that house was alive. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that, Josephine? Yeah, well, it's, it, um, it's interesting to hear you talk about it like that, Lizzie, because I, I think also the thing 
Shirley was so clear as a character. It's like exactly what you said that it, she's, she's like the center of the film. And so we also, I think really we're trying to also be very responsive to Lizzie's performance and that like we were responding to, to you, you know, to, to your, to the things that you brought. And I remember, I remember that first, time I think it was like one of the early one of the first three days of the shoot we it's the first time you kind of envision Paula and you sit down at the desk and your eyes kind of just like went off and I'm not going to do an exit I can't even do I'm not even going to try to like replicate what you did because it was just magical it was sort of like Rose had been in there she had just gone all gone through all of your stuff and you kick her out of the office and then and then you sat down and you just had this like you sat down and you just had this look on your on your face and I remember Sterla just really responding to that and we were all like this is the movie that we're making. It was just really clear, like, this is the movie that we're making, this sort of, that it, it was, it's about, there's a gray area that, and a sort of um, subconscious reality meeting reality that felt like it was present in Lizzie's performance and that it was really our job to capture that and to try to, like, meet her and, and the excellence that she was bringing and, and try to also, you know, be aware. And I think that's something that's really, beautiful about the crew that we had Sterla is like such an intuitive cinematographer he's just like a dream of a human being to work with and really um feel I think we you know I think we ended up leaning into handheld for the film because his work was so profound and what he was finding in relationship to the performances was really felt like it was the essence of the work so it was kind of just following once we found that it was sort of just like letting that be a defining element, like that it was a dance with the performances that could allow you to kind of go into another realm. Mm -hmm. Because the movie connects so strongly to your previous films, Josephine, in particular, this thematic that's especially is in Madeline's Madeline about, you know, when you're creating art, are you like damaging the people around you? What sort of impact does the creation of art have other people and do you feel like that's something that was like in the script of Shirley when you got it or and you just connected to it or is that something that you sort of like mind out of it because it's so much a part of your other work I don't think I even realized how similar I didn't realize how similar they were until you know we we had uh I had I was actually working on Madeline's Madeline when I at, when I got the job on Shirley and then that fall, Sarah Gubbins came and gave notes on Madeline's Madeline. And, and I remember we came out of the theater and we sort of looked at each other like, oh, these movies have a lot in common, you know, in terms of the themes that you're working with. And I, it, I, that was, it was very subconscious for me. I didn't realize that I was uh, like, that, that I had like picked up another muse manipulation movie <laughs> I just was like wow this is so this is such a good fit and I'm so in love with this material and, and weirdly I got the job and I didn't get the job from that movie they hadn't Madeline's Madeline wasn't finished when I got this job so um, it was sort of just like love and luck I guess that <laughs> made that happen yeah I know Elizabeth is is that something that you grapple with at all like do you ever have a hard time especially when you play really intense characters like with Shirley do you have a hard time like shaking them off like do characters like really sort of like stick with you no not really <laughs> no uh, I just um I get bored really easily um so I can't stay with it or it will it will get boring for me and it will become not um alive and fresh so I tend to even between takes um have to drop the drop the character and, and just kind of come out for a second because I uh just the way that I the way that I work is so instinctive that if I stay in it too long I'll get bored with it and I won't be able to do it anymore I just won't want to so I um I'm very good at like I mean as soon as it's cut I'm like that I'm on to something else. <laughs> <laughs> it was really okay. wild. It was wild to watch like Liz. We would just be like joking about something and she would say some like hilarious comment and then they'd be like action and then she would like go like into Shirley and collapse in the backyard. <laughs> <We'd be> like, <laughs> it was a very fast transition. Amazing. Amazing. But can you talk a little bit more about the Elizabeth, like what you do from take to take? Like, like, do you come into a scene really prepared with like ideas of what you want to do or like you're sort of like discovering it as you're performing the scene? Um, I guess a bit of both. 
uh, I tend to kind of have an idea and then usually that doesn't really work out very well. Like it's, you know, it's like the idea that you have on the way to work and you're like, this is how I'm going to do the scene. It's going to be great. And then you get in there and you're like, this is terrible. This doesn't work at all. And so you have to change it. I, so I've stopped kind of worrying too much about that um, because it usually doesn't work out very well for me. Uh, I'm very much, um, I kind one of the, I mean, the great thing about working on camera, obviously, is that if the camera's rolling and, and then we're in focus and we've got it, we've got it. So I don't have to do the same thing again. Um, I'll often ask the director or the DP or whoever it is, like, are we good with that? Because if we are, then I'm going to do something else because it's a complete waste of time for me to do the same thing twice. It that doesn't make any sense for me. Um, so I'm very much like, I like to try different things. I don't like to have a lot of preconceived ideas before I come in of what it should be. Um, you know, I, I like to be able to try a lot of different things. And, and we did a lot of that. I mean, we did watching this movie for the first time as a producer was like so overwhelming because we did so many different versions of things, right, Joe? So it was like, yeah. you didn't, uh, you kind of weren't quite sure which version that the Josephine was going to go with. And, and so it was um, Michael, especially with Michael and I, we would do like very different versions mm. of a scene versions where we were walking around a lot versions where we weren't and stuff like that. So, um, that's the way that I, I don't know, like to work. Josephine, maybe especially some of the like the, the dinner table scenes between Elizabeth and Michael, how do you deal with like all the footage that you're getting and, you know, the variety of what you're presented with? Um, you know, the dinner table was fun. I mean, that was, it was so, those are such well-written scenes. This is the, this is like one of the great parts. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're talking about the process of shooting them, I mean, we had, yeah, we had a, we, you know, we tried to, I think we tried to figure, map out a bit of blocking, especially since there was just like cups that needed to be refilled in certain times and, um, but then let the performances themselves like wildly, you know, go as they wanted to go. And, um, and I, you know, but Michael is so wonderful. I mean, he's just, it's, it was such a great joy to work with both Lizzie and Michael and see their totally different processes and see, um, you know, Lizzie wanting to come with the spontaneous energy and, and maybe not over rehearse. And Michael is loves to rehearse. He comes from a theater background. He, Michael Stuhlberg is like, you know, would, would be happy to rehearse. Like I remember when we were starting the shoot, he's like, I have an idea. What if instead of starting the shoot on Monday, we started in three weeks and we just rehearsed for three weeks. And I was like, I was like, I would love that, Michael. I have no idea how much I would love that. I don't think that's going to happen, <laughs> but I would really love it. And, um, but he did such beautiful work in his own rehearsal, you know, even though we didn't get the ton of group rehearsal, he had so many wonderful things planned. Like the scene, the beginning when the dinner table scene, when he kind of like, uh, you know, he was very clear with the props. He's like, I need the chicken here and the potatoes here. And then he put the butter very, like, he's like, I need it all the way in front of, of Shirley. It needs to be in front of Shirley. And then he walks across the table to Lizzie and sticks that butter knife in. And, you know, he had just planned these beautiful, like, kind of dances, I guess you could say, around the dinner table. And, um, uh, and he, and then it's a bit written like that, you know, he's the host and he's, he does all that. But there were some magic moments like that that were so exciting to see you know, him have prepared and bring. And then on the other hand, it was just so exciting to have Lizzie and feel like you never knew, like it was, there was just a magic that like descends and ascends and like comes out of her. And that was, I mean, obviously it's the thing around which the movie centers is like her performance that, that the, you know, every character is sort of in relationship to Shirley. Um, uh, and you know, and I know you didn't ask specifically about that, but I feel like we have to say, God, Odessa, beautiful Odessa, who just really like, and what a what an amazingly mature performance. She was 20 when we shot this movie. And she's like the eyes that you really discover the film through. And I feel like she gave such a strong like breath to the film as a whole and, and really allowed us in and allowed us to then be witness to Shirley's like machinations and plans and like, 
you know, scary details. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just wanted to like say hi. Good job, Odessa. We love you. <laughs> well, Elizabeth, can you talk a little bit about working with Odessa and maybe specifically that dynamic between Shirley and Rose? In your mind, what does Shirley want from Rose? Like, it's so, they're like, it's so confusing to me. Or, like, I can't really figure out like what it is she even wants from this girl that has appeared in her house. Like, how did you kind of work out that dynamic? And then what was it like acting with Odessa? Um, I think for me, to put it like simply, I think, I think ultimately what Shirley wants is to finish her story and to finish her novel. Um, so I think she wants Rose to help her do that. And however, however she can. I think that is truly the ultimate objective for Shirley. As kind of cold as that may sound, I do think that's what she wants. She wants to finish Hang's Man. And so um, that's kind of the driving force behind what she does. It's almost like a cat with a mouse and she's just like, <clears throat> or a child with a toy. And she's just like, what happens if I push you over here? And like now, <laughs> you know how kids sometimes they like, sometimes they have a toy and they want to like, sometimes they love it so much and they sleep with it and they love it and they name it and then they talk to it. And then sometimes they like, throw it against a wall and you're like I thought you loved that toy like why are you <laughs> abusing it I feel like that's like Shirley with Rose you know it's like this toy and she's like sometimes she loves it and sometimes she wants to feed it mushrooms and kill it you know uh Odessa speaking of Odessa though um I still don't believe that she was 20 when we shot this movie I still like this, this is so great that is so she is so mature and so fearless and um I need that. Like, I, mm. I couldn't have done this performance at all without Michael, Odessa, and Logan. Um, they, they are all fearless in their own ways. And Odessa and I had a lot of work together and obviously not a lot of time to talk about it. And she was not worried about it at all. She was so brave and open and full of ideas and didn't, you know, give a shit who I was and just was doing her, her, her thing and her performance. And he was a total pro professional, honestly. She's a true force. Josephine, does that sound right to you as far as the dynamic between Shirley and Rose? Oh yeah. Well, so, you know, it's fun to hear, like, I, I always think it's so amazing how a filmmaker thinks about 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 like what's happening in a movie and versus what an actor thinks about and what's happening in a movie and you have you know by nature you're coming at it from very different you know sides and I think I think obviously yes Lizzie is so right that you know there was this like kind of game there's also you know I guess there's also this really beautiful intimacy sort of unexpected intimacy that I feel like emerged you know when they when they became closer and when Shirley found that there were things about this little rose that were actually more meaningful to her and that that um that changed her and changed her way of thinking about her story and i think one of the things i love about sarah's script and then also the work we were doing to try to support that in the edit was sort of see how shirley's first perceptions of rose were so simple and then they become so complex and in a way she sort of adopts this young woman as like a part of herself you know it's a, she's a part of her creation process now that's like and it I, I think Sarah's script did such a beautiful job of allowing that relationship to constantly be dynamic it's in flux all the time and um when it becomes a little bit erotic I remember the first time we watched the film down that it really actually was like working that that erotic element was like I was like wow I didn't see that coming like I made the movie and I didn't see it coming you know and I think that's that speaks highly to Sarah's writing and to the and to the performance of like that it was inevitable and it also was unpredictable and um, there was I feel like that's it's it, it feels a lot like real female friendships that they're dynamic and complex and um, you inspire each other and then you hate each other and then you try to destroy each other and then you like stand together on the edge of a cliff facing the abyss you know like that there's like a lot there that um, feels really meaningful and and personally meaningful too. Um, yeah, and I feel like both, I was really grateful for the amazing instincts that, that both Odessa and Lizzie brought to this. I mean, there was, yeah, we were just telling the story the other night of like discovery in that cliff scene. It was written to be a bit different and um, 
it didn't work. And then uh, like Lizzie, we, I was like running in and out of the forest trying to figure it out. I was like, if I can be Shirley, I'll know what to do. And then Sarah was like, you know, kind of, Sarah was like, ran, Sarah writer ran down from Video Village and was like, do I need to rewrite the scene? And, you know, and then um, uh, Lizzie had this really beautiful idea of, she was like, well, I don't know, maybe I could try standing next to her. Is that, you know, would that help? That was my instinct. And I was like, yes, that's a good it was so, so there were really beautiful moments of like, that was so defining that she stood next to Rose, I think on the cliff edge. And, um, cause originally it was written to where I was just behind her looking at the back of her, the back of her head. Yeah. But now Elizabeth, is that a moment where like your sort of actor brain and your producer brain are sort of both working to come up with that solution? Like how, how do you, especially when you're on set, you're giving a performance as intense as this, how are you still like thinking in like a producerial way? Is that hard to juggle both roles? To me, they're so one in the same. I mean, that particular moment was probably more actor brain, but, um, and came from honestly, just the, the, the logic of it's, it's difficult to perform to the back of someone's head, especially at the end of a movie. You know, I wanted to look into her eyes and have that, have that connection you know um but for me the producer and the actor role there's very very one in the same uh you know because i can i can add things as a producer coming from an actor's perspective that i feel like are valuable and then there are producer things that i can give to myself as an actor that i feel like are valuable for example you know knowing why we've cast that person or knowing why we have this location or knowing how long we've got to do this scene and why we have only that amount of time to do that scene, you know, and the, all those, all those things I feel it's why I like producing so much is that, um, sort of seamless for me. I, I feel like I know so much more about the material approaching it as a producer than I, I think I would, I think I would than if I was just an actor. Um, I know about the other characters in a way that I don't normally really look at, you know, um, so it's one in the same. That particular moment was probably just an actor, an actor thing. When in doubt, just try to look into the other person's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that may help. <laughs> and now we have time for just one more question, Elizabeth. You know, there is some just magnificent drunkenness in this movie. <laughs> and are there any sort of tips for drunken acting? <laughs> um, well, I wish, I've always wished that I could be one of those people that actually drinks and, and just, you know, cause there are actors that do that. You just drink and then you're drunk and then you act. I can't do that because, cause drinking takes away my emotions. So I just become like a very happy person. So it doesn't really <laughs> help me to, I can't act anymore. You know, there's no complexity. So, um, I've done drunk. I've done, I've played drunk a a few times what is it that I try to do I think one of the things there's different levels but I think there's obviously the physicality of it which is is one thing um and, and but I think the most important thing is that everyone is a different kind of drunk you know so so people some people are really happy some people get aggressive some people get hyper um so you kind of have to decide what kind of drunk does this person get some people get really honest some people just don't say it. you know what I mean so you have to kind of decide what it is and then the other thing that I find important is that um no matter what kind of drunk you are you really believe in whatever it is so it's like if you're you know what I mean it's like if you're talking about something like you know political or if you're talking about an opinion like a drunk person really really believes that this is true you know or if, even if you're just like I don't or if you're angry, you know, it's like a drunk person really believes that they have a right to be angry, you know? So it's, I think that's for me kind of something that I try to think about as well. A drunk person's all in on their ideas. They're all in. And Josephine, was there anything to directing Elizabeth and Michael when they were playing these like really sort of like uh, drunken scenes? You know, what's funny is I don't think of any of the scenes as drunken. I mean, I think they're always drinking, like they're always drinking, but they're alcoholics. So I don't know that they, I never really ever, I don't think we ever, I ever thought, like, I can't even think of one scene that I would be like, oh, that's a drunken scene. It was yeah. more like, 
Shirley was always kind of Shirley's always in this precipice between worlds and um and I you know that she's always kind of in she's but her imagination is obviously a huge part of her life that's the foundation of you know her all of the money that comes into their family or most of the money that comes into their family and and it's how she loves to spend her 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 free time is in her imagination so I always just think of like that Shirley is like always kind of like diving into the imaginative space. Um, uh, so I'm actually curious what you mean when you say there's what, which, what are the drunken moments to you? <laughs> that, like, well, I, I agree with both of you. See, I think that, 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 and it was almost an unconscious choice, but there also, there also was always alcohol present yes. in every scene. Yep. So I, I think Shirley is the kind in this movie, not in real life, but I think in this movie, she's the kind of person who's just kind of always like two scotches down, you know, mm -hmm. and it's fine. She's fine. She can totally operate. It's like, it, that's actually her normal operating level is just a couple scotches in, you know, and that's just how the only scene I think that she's not like that is, um, which is probably why you, you almost don't notice that she's drunk because the only, because she is the whole time. The only scene where she's not like that is the final scene when she's yeah. waiting to hear from from Stanley and so all of a sudden there's this like focus and sobriety mm -hmm. and and vulnerability mm -hmm. you know to to her but but I can't say that any of this was like these weren't like decisions we made it was just kind of how it <laughs> it was kind of how it was written in a way yeah you know yes. it wasn't like we sat around and decided that I think it's just how it instinctively turned out right uh, well, terrific. I think Joe is going to zoom back in. There he is. Hi, Joe. <laughs> Hi, Joe. <laughs> and thanks to you both. Elizabeth, I'm sorry if I over-moderated. Uh, I should have let you <laughs> take the wheel. I, I have some notes, Mark, but I think you did pretty well. <laughs> well, you yeah. all did great. And, and thank you so much <laughs> for being here and um, spending so much time with us tonight. And I, what's, what's next? What's coming up for all three of you, actually? Oh. Josephine? Oh, um, well, I'm supposed to, I was supposed to make a movie this summer called The Sky is Everywhere. It's a young adult film, and I was very excited about it. And I pray, knock on wood, that we will still get to make it this fall. But, you know, following all the guild restrictions is, going, is not the easiest thing. So it's adding in like a month of prep, and it is unclear whether we will actually get to it. <laughs> but, you know, fingers are crossed. Um, yeah, that's that's the main that's the main thing on on the right next next up teed up. Um, um, or Mark, what about you? Oh uh, well, you can read all my work at uh, LA on the LA, LA Times dot com. Discount subscriptions available now. Awesome, Elizabeth. Um, I am. We're working towards being in prep for uh, season four of Handmaids. We we were two weeks in, so we've got some some work to do there um and i'm directing one of the episodes so i've got to when i go back i'll be directing um and uh let's see what else i mean i've got a bunch of stuff that i'm gonna do um i am i think the only thing that's like been announced is um the film i'm doing run rabbit run with dana reed um but there's a, there should be some other announcements in the coming weeks stay tuned um I think that's it. I have a couple movies coming out. French Dispatch, the Wes Anderson movie, and then <clears throat> I did this film with Taika Waititi. Um, next, that should come out. I don't know when, though. Um, so, yeah. What can you tell us about uh, French Dispatch? I think people are very excited to see that movie, and it keeps being unseen by us. <laughs> I know, but I'm happy that they're, I mean, hopefully going to be able to put it into theaters. I think that that's a nice, that's a nice thing. Um, I can't, I mean, I, I actually have a link to it in, in my email. I have to watch it. Um, so I haven't seen it yet, but, um, and nobody hacked my email, by the way. I can't believe I just said that. Um, <laughs> although like what, like cool, like film nerd is going to like hack my email to see like a Wes Anderson movie. If you can do that, you can watch it. That sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, that's like a cool hack. Um, it's, uh, it's obviously an ensemble film, like, like Wes's films are. And like, you know, from the cast, I have a small role in it. Um, but I got to work with some really cool people, Bill Murray and Tilda Swinton mm. and Owen Wilson and Jason Schwartzman, who I haven't worked with since Listen Up Phillips. So that was wow. really cool. Yeah. 
Um, and my, my kind of section, I would say sort of, um, I don't know. I'm probably not supposed to say anything, so I guess I'll stop there. But I got to I got to work with some like Wes Anderson, you know, icons, and and that was that was really really cool, mm. really special. That's awesome. I can't wait yeah. to see it. <laughs> I know. Me too. Maybe I'll watch it tonight. <laughs> in, a real, in a real theater one day, Josephine, we can see oh, it yes. in a real theater one day. I know. Yes. When is film form opening? Uh, I think. We'll, we'll be ready to go just as soon as we get the, you know, the clearance from, yes. from uh, New York City. So everyone here is, you know, uh, trucking along and hoping to get back to work as soon as we can. Yeah. yeah. So. You know, I've been going to film forum since I was like 19 years old when I first moved to New York because I used to go, I mean, I'm obviously a cinephile and I, it's one of the best houses. So... I'm such a huge fan of you guys and have been for so many. I mean, I know you are too, Josephine. I've been for so many years. Well, thank you so much for saying that. We, um, this is our 50th year. Wow. So here's hoping for another 50. And I think we all will get through this eventually. Um, it would be great to meet the three of you guys, um, you know, within six feet or even closer. I know, I know. In the, in the near future. Oh, I hope so. I know I was thinking how every time I go to film form, it's the only time when I go to the movies where I feel like I'm going to be smarter when I leave the oh, movie yeah. theater. <laughs> totally. And you guys have like the best retrospectives is always like seeing things that were so impossible to see and like just such great programs that were yes. so smart. Um, I know. How do you, I'm sure you're, you're going to say this if you haven't said it already, but how, how can people make sure film forum still exists and, and is still there? Thanks. Yes, we do have a COVID-19 emergency fund. Mm. So I encourage everyone to um, go ahead and support that. You can do that at filmforum.org backslash support. And I'm yeah, going to do it. Just, just staying in touch with, uh, with Film Forum and you know, you can join our newsletter. You can stay updated on our social media handles, Film Forum NYC. And you know, we'll get back as soon as we can. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, guys, I am going to thank everyone who joined us today on YouTube, and I encourage everyone to go to our website, filmforum.org, and rent Josephine's wonderful film, Shirley. I'd also <laughs> like to thank everyone at Neon that helped out, especially Russ Hall, Claire Timmons. I'd like to thank Erica Gray. I'd like to thank Ooh, everyone, everything, everyone at the Film Forum staff who helped put this event together, especially our director, Karen Cooper. And I think that's it. Good night, guys. Awesome. So much. Thank, Thank you, you, Mark. Bye. It's really good to see Thanks. you. Yeah. So good Thanks, to see Joe. You. Thank Bye -bye. you, Lizzie. Thank you. Thanks, good to Josephine. see you. Bye. Right. Bye, guys. Bye, Joe.